What's up friends, Zach Rossica here, um, the last strap man. Wanted to come on here and uh, fill you in on what's been going on, doing some traveling for the family, for our oldest, um, for some therapies in Tampa, Florida. Back home, battling with some eczema. That's why I haven't posted any videos since being back. Um, it hurts like hell, um, but it's healing up pretty good. It's a battle I've been dealing with for about three years, so uh, it's not fun. Anywho, what we're here to talk about today is pedal pond. Um, I've followed Chris Robinson, as I mentioned in my last video, <clears throat> since his first post, I think he was 12 years old, the owner of pedal pond, and I've drawn a blank and no disrespect to the other gentleman who's super awesome. I enjoyed watching their recent videos with uh, meeting with Philip Sace, doing a sound check, and uh, with the other owner who I love already. He's just such a great guy, and uh, I assume he's the builder. But um here to celebrate Pedal Pond and uh, all that young Chris Robinson has built. I'm not sure how old he is now, but I started watching him when he was 12. Fine, fine young man, very uh, knowledgeable, tone hound, and um, just have been a big fan of him all around, not only as a player, but as a kind person. And uh, after getting to know him, he's even more kind than I could have imagined. And I'm so proud of him and all that he and his company have accomplished. <clears throat> to say is very well deserved. Uh, is a true statement. So um, I'm gonna be going through demos of three pedals, the Texan Twang, the Pedal Pond Fuzz, and the Pedal Pond Blues Print. So I got it on cinematic doing a little bit different style here for my videos moving forward because I don't want to have two cameras set up and do all that. I want it to be easier to record to get the tones to you faster. So I'm going to uh, speak and talk on some uh, information about these pedals. So the Texan Twang um, was made popular by the builder Cesar Diaz. Most of you know of him. He was a tech for Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, I think he was for Carlos Santana and uh, modded amps for a bunch of superstars. Um, he was a wild man, uh, from what I understand, in the few videos that I've seen, just a, just a wild man and a great guy and uh, knew his tone. So he would mod super reverbs and my understanding, uh, you know, disable the uh, first input on super reverbs and stuff, maybe drop the, uh, or, or put in a twin reverb um, transformer there would be four ohm and two Stevie Super Reverbs or an eight ohm for his Vibe Reverse because it's a single Fender combo. You know, the single single speakers are always eight ohm with Fender and uh, with four tens, like a Super Reverb, they're two ohm. But he would put in a bigger transformer and up the power is my understanding, regardless, Super Reverb's a Super Reverb, whether it's 100 watts or 40, 45 watts. And... Uh, you know, just more headroom is what you're going to get out of that. And that's what he did. His hot rodder also had a gain boost where he essentially, I'm pretty sure, took out the negative feedback completely out of the amp, which gave it more gain. Could have that reversed. But I had a super reverb way back in the day that I paid $300 for. It was a mid, like a 74 um, silver face, had a mid, one single Mitch Match speaker, stock CTS speakers. And uh, I paid $300 for it. Truly the best sounding amp I've ever had. The gentleman who owned Northern Hydraulics wanted it back and uh, up in North Carolina when I was living there at the time, I gave it back to him. Biggest regret of my life uh, as far as music goes. Um, it was a piece of shit, but it sounded freaking phenomenal. I'm sure some of you can relate. I was 17, I think 18, so 22 years ago, I had that amp for a short time, played about six, eight gigs with it. Best tone of my life, I can't even explain it. No, I've had probably eight Super Reverbs since then vintage ones, one reissue and the rest being vintage. None of them compared, they got sent. Uh, I just bought a 68 not long ago. It was no good. Um, so you gotta find the magic. But anyway, Cesar Diaz, Chris Robinson, this is based off of um, not the square face. The square face is what the Pedal Pond Fuzz is based off of. Um, this is based off of the Texas Ranger from Cesar Diaz. NTE 103, I think transistors, two of them. Um, I could be wrong, um, but yeah, I mean, essentially what this is, is more or less, this is to me, is uh, supposed to be like a treble booster. That being said, what it sounds like to me with a Strat, it sounds like a fuzz. 
it puts me in the mind heavily into Stevie's fuzz tone on uh, 89, 1989, Austin City Limits Live. Um, and the roll off is fantastic. It sounds great. Um, Stevie was definitely, from my ears, using a fuzz face in the 1989 um, Austin City Limits. And, uh, you know, it's all on that roll off for the, for the magical, you know, percussive clean that's real chimey. And this does that to a T, like a great fuzz face, like the best fuzz faces. But this puts me in the mind of when, when, when you just have it set without your, your, your volume rolled off, it puts me in the mind of, of, of a broken up fuzz. And you'll hear that in the demo. To me, with your volume on your guitar up, level halfway or more up on high, mid, or low, it sounds like a fuzz. Low is about my favorite or mid. High is a little bit too more high end, shaves off a lot of lows. I think the magic is in the mid and the low switch. Um, to taste, you could do the volume. I don't think it really affects the, the, the tone much, but basically I run it halfway or over. So you gotta get that volume up on these. And another secret that where you could be mis, misled by plugging it in and trying it and be, being you can become disappointed um, because they kind of sound like crap. If you don't have an amp, if you're not pushing this into an amp or running this into an amp that's pushed a little bit, you got some pushed clean going on. If you don't have any kind of compression in an amp and you're running it to a clean channel, don't buy one, okay? All right, now these are just my opinions, but if you're gonna be running straight clean, don't buy one, it's not gonna sound good, okay? But if you're gonna have it push a little bit where there's some slight compression, a push clean, by all means, this will be one of your best friends if you play a Strat, and I'm sure a Les Paul too. Hella fuzz tones, um, hella clean roll off, you'll hear it. Now I won't be sharing um, the settings of what it is, but here's the deal. I'm not gonna be, I'll run the high just for you to get a, a vibe of it, but it's mainly gonna be the mid, the woofier sound is gonna be the low with a lot more low end. There's two knobs, you can't go wrong. Use the mid or high, depending on your choice of, you know, EQ frequency for your guitar and rig, but it's gonna, you're gonna be liking the mid or the low 99% chance. The volume, have it more than about halfway up or more, okay? So, that's the Texan Twang. Your boy, Zach, much love to you. Thank y'all so much for the support, all the new subscribers. Let's get into some tones. Thank you. 